Hello and welcome. Today we're going to talk in detail about cell membrane. But as a little background, let's just remind ourselves of a typical cell structure. A typical cell a typical cell has a nucleus. It has a bunch of organelles or structures within the cytoplasm here that actually undertake the functions of that cell. And I've just drawn two in there to depict uh, mitochondria and rough endoplasmic reticulum. But there are many other um, intracellular organelles that uh, sit within the cytoplasm. And this cytoplasm, let's just write that out, This cytoplasm is fundamentally uh, uh, water with these structures within it and it has a whole meshwork of scaffold that hold these various functional structures. Remember the nucleus itself at the core of all cells contains the DNA and the DNA is identical in every single cell in your body. Surrounding the outside of a cell is the cytoplasm, it, it, sorry, is the cell membrane. And this is the cell membrane out here. And cell membrane acts as the barrier separating the inside of a cell from the outside environment. And within this environment, all sorts of factors might be floating past, you know, viruses or bacteria on the negative side or proteins or hormones on the positive side uh, that run past a cell in the intercellular fluid. And this fluid surrounds all cells and is bathing them. And this intercellular fluid, inter meaning between, intercellular fluid is a filtrate of the blood and getting back to our cell membrane that acts as the boundary separating the intercellular fluid from the cytoplasm. So let's have a look at a much higher magnification at what cell membrane actually looks like and discuss what it's made of. So if we draw a cell membrane at a very high resolution what you see, this is just one sheet of cell membrane. What you actually see is that cell membrane is fundamentally made of uh, fat. Which is a logical thing to do because the external environment, as we discussed, all of this area out here, is a... Uh, the intercellular fluid is a water-based environment and the cytoplasm on the inside here uh, what colour shall we use this shall we and the cytoplasm down here is a water-based environment so by making cell membrane out of fat you can keep the two water environments separate but the actual molecules that make up the cell membrane have a fat on uh, are made of heads and tails and there's two of these molecules sort of end to end well there's billions of them but they sort of sit like this and you know I can't draw enough in I'll just draw a couple or two more let's say but cytoplasm is made of these fat molecules arranged in a really tricky way that have a, a sort of a semi-water soluble end to them. These ends, these heads, are semi-water soluble or as we say hydrophilic. Let's just write that out. Hydro, which means water. Philic, which means like. And at the other extreme of them, th this area in here of the molecules is the, the hydrophobic or the hated.
they hate water. So this is how cell membrane is constructed. These rows and rows, and we call it a bilamina system because there is two sublayers to it. One on the outside and one on the inside that is reflective of each other. But that's not all that you find in, in cell membrane. Cell membrane also has embedded in it a whole bunch of proteins. And these proteins of all different structures and types, we'll just draw one more over here. In fact, we'll draw one sort of sticking out a wee bit like that, sticking through like that. And these proteins sit embedded in, I'll draw a few more of these because I'm just sort of being boring really, embedded in this fatty bilayer. And the proteins are actually the most interesting part for me in particular of cell membrane because they are what actually gives cell membrane some of its functions. For example, let's just take this, uh, this one over here. Let's imagine that some sort of hormone like insulin, let's just assume insulin, is passing by. And here's a little chunk of insulin sitting here. What happens is this, some of these proteins are receptors that they bind things that go past. And for example, let's imagine that this receptor is binding the insulin as it goes past. And what happens is that by changes in this protein, it can send a message into the cytoplasm below. And this is the way in which the inter cellular environment or the ex outside world can actually influence the function of a cell within by various protein receptors embedded in the cell membrane. Other types of proteins allow various chemicals to run through the membrane. So they have sort of like uh, passageways through them. And really interestingly, these passageways have various uh, trapdoors on them that can open and close to stop the flow of things running through them. And it also has very unique sort of bits on the end of the tube that only allow certain molecules to actually run, run through these pipes. So these proteins allow various molecules proteins, minerals, ions, all sorts of things to run through them. And they are controlled, so it's not just a sort of a pipeline from the outside to the inside. So very specific things can only flow through it. And also the volume is controlled by various trapdoor mechanisms that lock the, pa the, the channel. So these are very critical proteins that are embedded in cell membrane. Oh, and while we're here, let's talk about one more, one of my favourites. There is other proteins in the cell membrane that have on them little sort of flags that uniquely identify your cells as belonging to you. So every single cell in you has an identical flag on it that cell that tells you your body that this cell is unique to you. That's a really important thing. Well, it's an important and sometimes tricky problem these proteins cause because there are times when we want to put the cells of someone else into you. For example, if you needed a kidney transplant, we want to take someone else's kidney, someone else's kidney and put it in you. But the problem is the flags on the surface will be different. And that's what rejection is. Rejection is the process that your body uses to identify the flags on all the cell membrane in you to say that they're yours or not. So rejection is the process where your body looks around at this cell membrane and goes, hey, the flags on these cells do not belong to me, therefore they're bad and I must destroy them. 
So that is what rejection is. Rejection in transplants is based on some of the proteins that sit in cell membrane. Now this is only three examples of the types of proteins you can find in cell membrane. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of different types of proteins all doing different jobs embedded in this bilaminar layer of fat-derived molecules that separate the outside world from the inside world, while the proteins on the whole allow the inside world, the cytoplasm, to interact with the outside world in a controlled manner. Thank you.